one of us has got to go pick up that cache of furs we got stashed at Twin Falls. And I'm still not sure I'm doing the sensible thing by letting you two take the rest of the pelts to the rendezvous. Now, Daniel, you know you can depend on us. Well, sure. I mean, Gabe and me work together like the well-oiled gears of one of them fancy European clocks. L like peas and greens? Don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it, because we're going to be there ahead of everybody else and get top dollar for them pelts. And when you get there with your furs and sell them, we're all going to be a lot richer and have a celebration. Well, it seems to me that I recall you two singing the same song last year. Only the celebration came before the rendezvous, and we got bottom dollar for our pelts. <laughs> last time we ran into some <laughs> unforeseen complications. Two Chickasaw maidens and a jug of white lightning. Now, there's more to that story than you know about, Daniel. Uh, yeah, well, as a matter of fact, Daniel, now, there was some feats of heroism on our part, but us being the modest Jaspers that we are, we just chose not to reveal it. Well, I figure if you two manage to stay out of just half the trouble this year, then we'll get at least half again is better price this year for our pelts. Tell them off, Daniel. We'll be there two days before anyone else, Daniel. Word of honor. Ain't nothing going to stop us this time. If you don't slow me up, that is. If I don't slow you up, well, you big tub of lard, I can out walk you, out run you. What I mean is, you know you ain't long on keeping your mind on business. I ain't long. Now, who found them squaws anyhow? Well, passing the time of day is one thing. But who was it that decided to teach them how to sing Yankee Doodle while them men folks snuck off with our pelts? We're gonna get these first, strong. <clears throat> Dirty old trapper is what, what I am. I have, I have been, been all my life. I've been in these woods so doggone long, took an oak tree for my wife. A dirty old trapper is what I am. I have been all my life. I've been in these woods. What'd you forget the words? <clears throat> oh no. Daniel ain't never gonna believe this. Unless we take him back as witnesses. We're gonna take them all back. No, I guess he still wouldn't believe us. All right, do you want our hides or them? Say, say. You understand, Indian? What's he talking about? He said to move out. That's what I thought he said. a big man with an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he gentle moon was a man yes a big man he was brave he was fearless and as tough as a mighty oak tree from the coonskin cap on the top of old and to the heel of his raw high shoe Rippin'est, roarin'est, fightin'est man The frontier ever knew Tangled Moon was a man Just a big man And he fought for America To make all Americans free Tangled Moon things, but I never saw Indians doing anything like that. Well, I do. Bien hecho, Tanoma. Descanse ahora. Ah, señores. American trappers, my men were correct. Welcome. May I present myself? I am Admiral Alejandro Buenaventura, at your service. And you? I don't talk too good with my hands tied. Oh, my apologies, senores. <laughs> I teach my men to take every precaution.
I'm Josh Clements. He's Gabe Cooper. Senor Clements, Senor Cooper. Uh, may I offer you some refreshments? After your uh, involuntary journey. Gentlemen, we shall have a grand alliance. To the success of our mission. Our mission? Oh, uh, we don't mind drinking your wine. It's just that toast I'm not too sure about. Then to freedom. I don't mind getting drunk on that one. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt you are wondering, who is this mysterious pomposity who calls himself Admiral while prancing around in deer skins hundreds of miles from the sea, yes? An excellent question deserves an excellent answer, no? Admiral, suppose you stop the questions and quit playing games. Games? The great jewel knife of King Charles III of Spain is pressed against the throat of your country. You call that a game? You know, Admiral, I kind of got the idea you were Spanish yourself. For 14 generations. But I have no love for Carlos the Magnificent since he destroyed my fleet. You mean the Spanish destroyed their own fleet? Well, it might perhaps be better if we called it a, a private fleet. <laughs> you got anything particularly against pirates, Gabe? Ken says I have, unless they got something against me. On the contrary, Senor Cooper, I think you will find that I am your ally in particular. I'm listening. Well, in Hispaniola, all the people of your color are the slaves of Spain. Hmm? So they decide to make a revolution. They pick a general and a staff, all black, like the rest of them. And they make their plans. I, meanwhile, am sitting out in the sun, an admiral without a fleet, searching for a way to find revenge against his celestial majesty, the good Carlos. And then, some way or another, I get together with this splendid revolution of the blacks. How may I serve you? I say to the general. Well, he looks me over and sadly advises me that uh, he is without ships. But perhaps I can help in another, uh, in another way. Anything to make trouble for Spain, I say. So here I am, training an Indian army, making trouble for Spain. <laughs> Seems to me it would make more sense if you made trouble for Spain in Hispaniola, wouldn't it? So it would seem. But uh, my general, he figures that uh, if we make trouble for Spain here, they will send troops here, leaving not so many troops to make a revolution against. But, Admiral, now I'm still not sure about where this great jeweled knife comes in. Well, uh, there is a worm in the apple we do not anticipate. El Capitan Torres, very ambitious man, Torres. He's like this with Carlos the Magnifico. He whispers in the king's ear a plan to conquer the United States. <laughs> with what? Here is the point of the jeweled knife, gentlemen. There? That's just a trading post. Yes, yeah, a Spanish trading post. Run by El Capitan Torres. A cover-up for a plan to conquer the United States. Conquer the United States? It's hard to believe, but true with barrels of guns and powder disguised as flour and supplies. And then when Torres receives word that the king's troops are ready to sail upriver from New Orleans, <laughs> then the flour is magically transformed into gunpowder. Then El Capitan Torres will march east. Now, your next question is, how do I know this, huh? Well, oh, you taste the couscous, then I tell you. The what? First, I teach the Indians to cook, then I teach them to fight. Sure smells good. The best of my cooks, Joselito, is now in the employ of El Capitan Torres. This here, Joselito, he's still working for you, is that it? For me, for himself, for freedom, gentlemen. You know, Admiral, you serve a fine bowl of couscous and good wine, but... But you do not believe me. And you want to go. Go, then. No one will stop you. 
Perhaps I can find others more simpatico to your cause. All right. Even if we did believe you, what can we do about it? Somewhere in El Capitan Torres' trading post is the invasion plan. My cook, Joselito, has sharp ears and nimble fingers, but he has been unable to find it. And you want us to find it? As American stories will never suspect you. After all, your country is cooperating with Spain. Your country needs you, gentlemen. The circumstances are bizarre, I know, but... Oh, no! There's nothing bizarre about that. We've got to get into Torres' trading post, snoop around, find a plan, get it out without getting strung to some Spanish flagpole. Then you will do it? <laughs> I'm sorry, Admiral. Some other time. Right now, we got a rendezvous with a beaver about that tall with a part in his hair. But if you ever come floating by in your flagship again, you just pipe us aboard, and we'd love to have some more of that couscous. Sure is better than hog jaws. <laughs> Well, Daniel, we uh, met this Spanish admiral named uh, Buenaventura, and he told us that the King of Spain was going to take over the United States. You know, you know what I think? I think we never saw him, and if we never saw him, we never heard him. In fact, thinking back on it, would you rightly say we did see him? Let's get to work on the first. <laughs> Good for Indians. You thinking what I'm thinking? If you're thinking we're caught in the middle of a crossfire, then you're thinking what I'm thinking. Look over here. Aren't they Spanish soldiers? Yeah, and on the wrong side of the river. Maybe the Admiral knew what he was talking about. I wish you'd look at that. Got more holes than a horse blanket full of spring moths. And, Daniel, the reason our furs are shot full of holes is because we got caught in a crossfire between a bunch of Spaniards and Indians. Why don't we just tell them that we got caught in this big hailstorm? Son americanos. Ah, señores. Perdón. No era nuestra intención asustarlos. Nosotros uh, somos amigos de los americanos. Do any of you fellas speak English? No comprendo. Posiblemente alguno de ustedes hable español. You shot our pelts full of holes. You, your, your rifles are... And, uh, you, uh, you, you ruined our furs. Now what are you going to do about it? El Capitán comprende? El Capitán. Did you say Captain? El Capitán. Attention! Escuadrón! Rompan fila! And now, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Well, if you'll forgive me for being blunt, I'd just like to know what you're doing here. Now, a year ago, this was a trading post, an American trading post. And so it still is, except for temporary conditions which have altered its status. Oh, of course, we shall be more than delighted to help you with whatever provisions you expected to find here. We don't want any provisions. You see, we ran into one of your patrols up the road a little ways. Oh, I trust they didn't inconvenience you in any way. As a matter of fact, they did. Now, these used to be prime pelts until your boys decided they wanted to ventilate them a little. Oh, it's most unfortunate. Naturally, we will reimburse you. Mr. Maricano, you captain. And of course, you will accept our poor hospitality for the night. Oh, I insist. Give estos señores al cuarto de huéspedes. Until dinner, señor. Por acá, señores. 
atiende a los señores. Que estén cómodos. Friendly enough, fellow, wouldn't you say? Les he ordenado una y otra vez evitar incidentes con los americanos. ¿Cuántas veces se los tengo que repetir? Lo siento mucho, mi capitán. No sabíamos que estaban no ahí. No sabíamos, no sabíamos. Solamente habíamos pensado... ¡Silencio! Capitán, he say he hope this make up nicely for the furs. Oh, you, you tell your captain we thank him a lot. Excuse me, sir. I don't think I caught your name. Jose Dito, señor. From the Indies, aren't you? Si, español. Will there be anything else, señor? No, just thank the captain for us. Si, gracias. You figure that's the Admiral's man? I don't know. But I'll tell you just as soon as I tried somebody's cooking. Oh, never had I tasted such magnificent sauce. Mine host, I said, you must give me the secret of this sauce or I shall perish. <laughs> no, he said, a secret it is and a secret it shall remain. Now I ask you, gentlemen, what was I to do? You got me stumped. Purchase the cook, of course. <laughs> oh, he asked for a fantastic price, but I was, I was completely at his mercy. <laughs> More wine, Senor Clemens? Oh, no. No, it's awful good, but... Oh, no. I'm afraid if I have any more of it, I might forget to ask you a question. It's kind of been preying on my mind a little bit. Ah, uh, you are politely telling me that I have been talking too much. Forgive me. It is so rare that we have such congenial guests. No, it's just that... Uh, I'd like to know how you and your troops are occupying a fortified position on United States soil. We are here with permission from your government. A friendly gesture from one friendly country to another. Now, does that satisfy you? No, sir. It is very simple. We are chasing Indians. For a while, we weren't too sure who was chasing who there this morning. You are familiar <laughs> with this tribe of savages? I'm familiar with them, but I'll tell you this. I never saw them handle themselves like they did today in that fight. Oh, they can handle themselves very well, I can assure you. So well that they have uh, seriously affected the king's trade. You mean they've been crossing the river? Precisely. They attack our trading posts, our river boats. We give chase and they withdraw to your side of the river. And so my government applied to your government for permission to cross the river in pursuit. Your government granted this permission. Sargento, el documento americano, por favor. And so, my friend, here we are. Signed by your Secretary of State, as you can see. Mm. You've been mighty nice about this, Captain. I hope you weren't too put out by our questions. Oh, not at all, Senor Cooper. I admire your uh, patriotic fervor. I assume, then, that you're satisfied that I and my few soldiers are not here to conquer your country? I guess we deserve that. Captain, we thank you. And we'll be pulling out at dawn in the morning. Well, have a good journey, gentlemen. Good night, Captain. Senor Cooper. Jose Lito, traiga más café, por favor. Si, sí, Capitan. Feels good. What do you make of him? He's real polite. So is the Admiral. The question is, which one of those dingbats are trying to take over the country? Right? Right.
Didn't we do this once before? Dang! He says to I know. Maybe we ain't gonna save the United States, but I'm sure learning the lingo. Oh. I think they're trying to tell us to get dressed. Yeah, and I'm getting a little tired of it. <laughs> the price of liberty, my friend. Hey, quítese ese uniforme. And now, uh, what did you think of El Capitan Torres? We thought he was a dingbat. If you mean snake, you have been observant. No, he's a dingbat because he overpaid us for our furs. When a man overpays, isn't he buying something more than you bargained for? Meaning what? Meaning your suspicions of his patrols on the wrong side of the Mississippi? You're on the wrong side of Old Muddy yourself, aren't you, Admiral? Ah, even if I wanted to, could I conquer the United States with this small band of Osage Braves? You seem to trust him more than you trust me. Yeah, well, he's got an agreement with our government. Ah, caray, que bruto, bruto. I risk my best men to bring back two fools. <laughs> yeah, come on. Here. Here is the dagger pointed at the throat of your country. The invasion plans of Coronel de Vega. Coronel de Vega? Yesterday, he commanded the troops ready to sail upriver from New Orleans to join Torres. We buried him with full military honors. But you only got half a plan here. Yes, and Torres has the other half. Put them both together, you have proof of the king's treachery. <laughs> you know, it just might take a couple of fools like us to pull this thing off. Then you will do it, yes? We'll do it, yes. You will be assaulted by Indians, then taken to Torres headquarters alone. I will? And you, my friend, you are going to be dead. Dead? Torres' patrol will be here in about an hour. Little realism, amigo. We must convince Torres you were really assaulted by Indians. Sounds good. At an appropriate time, I will make an appearance at Torres' headquarters. Posing as the Vega's orderly. As soon as he uncovers his half of the plan, then we make our move. Oh! Can't you convince your friend this is just a ruse? Game. 
cave! You ready? Ah, uh, I must warn you, amigo. I'm a thinking pugilist. I'll just try to hit you when you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Dame el agua. Thank you. Ah. Oh, Qué bueno que llegamos a tiempo. ¿Te sientes bien? Ah. Vámonos. Thank you. I mean, the uh, gracias. De nada. Está bien. No tiene nada roto. Gracias, doctor. De nada. He says you're not seriously hurt, Senor Clemens. Is that so? Mm. Do you feel well enough to tell me what happened here last night? I said, what happened here last night? They killed Gabe Cooper. Oh, the poor man. My, my deepest sympathy. But when I awoke this morning, I found my sentry abducted and you and your friend missing. Well, I... I just don't know what I'm going to tell these folks. I am loath to interfere in a man's grief, senor, but... Uh, but I'm afraid I must press you for a report. Well, I'd, I'd be happy to tell you anything I could, Captain, but the Indians just jumped us from behind. That's all there was to it. Uh, perhaps you can be more specific. Well, we was sleeping, old Gabe and me. Heard a noise, went out to the stockade and saw some Indians heading for the supply house. We just figured they was going to steal, and somebody jumped us from behind. That is what confuses me. You see, nothing was taken from the supplies. Oh, uh, well, I, I think they thought it was too risky, and, and well, anyhow, they took us out at gunpoint and, and joined up with some big war party. Oh, Gabe and me, we tried to escape. I made it. Oh, Gabe got killed on the way out. This war party, how big was it? Well, well, we, uh, I didn't count. It was heading south towards the river. I appreciate your cooperation, senor. I shall bother you no further. Oh, well, I would, uh, look, no, I've got, to tell you the truth, Cap, I appreciate the company. It's, uh, I wouldn't want to be here by myself. It's just a memory of... Poor old Gabe. Join us for dinner, senor. We shall try to distract you from your sorrows. Oh, you, you are a nice man. Yeah. Poor old Gabe. He, he was always so happy. <laughs> oh, now you get it. Now you get it. Of course, it ain't no couscous. <laughs> you more greens, honey. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, close. You girls are so pretty, a man would be plum loco to complain about your cooking anyway. <laughs> oh, no, thanks. <laughs> One more bite and we're gonna bust. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but you've been so hospitable. At least I should do is to play you one song, huh? <laughs> Yankee Doodle. <laughs> Yankee Doodle went to town, riding on a pony. <laughs> Struck a feather in his head and called it, called it macaroni. <laughs> Yankee Doodle. Keep it up, Yankee Doodle, Yankee Doodle Dandy. I tell you, mind the music, mind the music and the score, and we'll, with the girls, be handy. Dig it deep and narrow. Poor William died for me today. Un ayudante, mi capitán. Víctima de un ataque de los indios. ¿Quién es? Es un sirviente del coronel de Vega. Coronel de Vega. ¿Estás seguro? Sí, mi capitán, el coronel de Vega. Hazlo pasar. Muy bien. Oh, dig the... Deep on Rosalito, will you see that Senor Clements gets to his quarters, please? Si, Capitan. Head deep. Do you mind? Take a, get away from me. Rosalito, me I told you to get him out of here. Si, Capitan. Let Help me, Rosalito. Que pena, que pena. El mejor comandante de todo el mundo, el coronel de Vega. Ay, que pena, que pena. Deja de babosear y dime inmediatamente. ¿Qué ha pasado con el coronel de Vega? Indios salvajes. Indios. Posiblemente cien. Debe haber muerto de, de cien heridos. Muerto. El coronel Vega muerto. Le, le traje esta carta. Estaba muy ansioso de que usted la recibiera. Poor William died for me today. He'll die for me tomorrow. Lleva a este hombre a la cocina y dale de comer. Ah, gracias. Excelente. Gracias. Ay, qué pena. Joselito, llévatelo de aquí. Sí, señor Joselito, rápido. Sí, señor. Please, senor. Capitan! No me interrumpas, Joselito. I'm sorry, Capitan. I can do nothing with this man. Senor Clemens, I must insist that you go to your room. Anything you Get him out of here, Joselito. Capitán. ¿Qué hay? Es importante. ¿Qué es importante? Tengo que hablar con usted, capitán. Bien. Capitán. ¿Mm? Esta gorra. ¿Qué pasa con la gorra? Le pertenecía al guardia que fue capturado por los indios en el ataque de anoche. ¿Estás seguro? Oh, estoy seguro. Fíjese. Señor, you are most difficult. Please, you must come to your room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Saca a ese borracho de aquí. Sí, capitán. Yo era capitán. Come along. Captain, I'm leaving. Suspicious. What's the captain gonna do? He will question him. Can, can you get out of here without anybody asking you any questions? Yes. Well, this is what we've been looking for. Now you take this to Buena Ventura's camp and you give it to Gabe Cooper and tell him that if I don't get out of here to get this to Daniel Boone and tell him to guard it with his life. Do you understand? I understand. Now, as soon as I free Buena Ventura, we'll catch up with you. I will tell him. Now, you better get going, because the sooner you get that out of here, the better. Senor Clements. What? Thank you. For what? For risking yourself to save him. I know you could take this out of here yourself. He would do it for all of us. Now, go on. Get it. Ante Dios lo juro, le he dicho la verdad, en el nombre de mi santa madre. Cada palabra que le he dicho es la verdad, lo juro. ¿Dónde encontraste esta gorra? Es mía. ¿Y la carta? Como le he dicho, me la dio el coronel. Uh, excuse me, Captain, I just uh, come back to apologize. Will you not stay in your room, señor Clements? Well, now, now, hold on. No, Captain, I, I can understand you being a little bit sore. But I, I went out and got some fresh air, and I figured I'd kind of made a fool out of myself, and uh, I just wanted to come back and uh, apologize to you. Uh, and if you'll let me have a cup of coffee, I'll go on and won't bother you anymore. Get it and get out. ¿Hasta cuánto piensas seguirme mintiendo? Le juro, es la verdad. Échelo fuera. I... I... I want to say you've been a real good host, Captain. I got a lot out of this visit. Everything I could ask for. Enciérrenlo. Yo me encargo de él después. Sargento, enciende el fuego. Sí, Capitán. Trouble? Who is that? Why, this is that well-oiled gear from that fancy European clock. What are you? It's great. 
just great. The entire United States depending on you and you're out of here nosing around. It looks to me right now that you're in more trouble than the United States. Is that a fact? Well, do you want me to help you out or not? The way I feel right now, it might be better if you left me here. Doy hasta tres para que me digas cómo conseguiste la carta. Uno. Dos. ¡Agárrenlos! might come in handy. Who are you? We did a couple of trappers and a pirate trying to get along. You ready to go? After you, Senor Clements. Senor Clements, Senor Clements, the plan, you got it? We got it. It's a little sense ground the edges, but we got it. Here, you carry this. Makes me powerful nervous. Oh, I wish Daniel could read Spanish. Because you're never, never going to believe this. this. his belt to tie him in. Sorry for this. <laughs> Sargento! Josh, over there, over there. Come on. Josh, let's turn this cannon around. Sácame de aquí, estúpido. Sácame rápido. Para arriba. A ver. Here, we might get. like the rendezvous is over. Everybody done come and gone. Not everybody. I, I'm plum tuck it out. I think I'll sit down here and rest. Why don't you go and talk to old Daniel? No, you... I'm a little tired myself. Don't even try to tell me. I'm not sure I want to hear it. Well, to tell you the truth, it's an interesting story, Daniel. Something like uh, 300 Tuscaroras and a grizzly put you up a tree? No, that's not how it was at all. We held off an invasion of the Spanish army. Uh, the Spanish came marching over the Mississippi, waving their swords and, and took your pelts away from you. No, they paid us for them. Top money, too. And this is a map of the invasion plan of the Spanish. Now then, if you're through joining at us, 
I think it'd be a good idea if we took off east and gave these to the government. That's right. Here we sit talking while the whole country is endangered from the jewel knife of Charles III. Come on, Gabe. is the Order of the Purple Condor. The condor being the national bird of Espanol. Well, as I recall it, you got it for coming in fourth in the turkey shoot. Now, you fellas are just a wee mite overdressed, I'd say. But it looks like supper's just about ready. I don't expect you to understand. But I'll tell you this. When you sit down with the body that's been decorated by a foreign power, it automatically becomes a state dinner. Well, Ezra, would you seat their excellence? Yes. Your Highness. Oh, would I tell the Widow Scoggins I got to you first? Oh, she already knows. Oh, which reminds me, uh, Gabe and me won't be going to the Salt Lake with you. How's that? You got the list. Uh -huh. so let's see now. On Sunday, the preacher's wife invited us over. On Wednesday, the Widow Scruggins. Saturday night, Cincinnati is having a big to-do for us. Oh, my. That about covers Boonesboro Gentry, doesn't it? That's that's right. Sounds like you two are going to be eating kind of high off the hog next couple of days. Israel, there's something about heroes that gets to people. You know, it just doesn't seem quite fitting to be feeding cornbread and pan drippings to two bodies that just saved the United States. Well, Rebecca, I'm almost ashamed. Gabe and me would like you to know that these medals ain't going to make any difference between us. You're sure? I'm sure. I'm positive. Mm -hmm. 